They say the pen is mightier than the sword. A new book on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict hopes to prove just that. Kingdoms of Olives and Ash, Writers Confront the Occupation, was edited by Pulitzer Prize-winning author Michael Shabin and fellow writer Ayelet Waldman. The anthology features 26 essays from a slew of famous writers like Dave Eggers, Madeleine Tien, and Mario Vargas Llosa. All on their experiences in the West Bank, and their encounters with Palestinians living under Israeli military rule. The book tackles a controversial subject, and it's already dividing opinion. So what made all these authors decide to dip their pens in the political ink? What we have an obligation to do, each of us, is to chip away at the edifice of occupation. All we can do, each of us, is take our brick out of that wall. And this book, this is my brick. It's the brick of these 26 writers. And eventually, once enough bricks are gone, the wall will crumble and it will fall and justice will prevail. Reading about the occupation, I thought I knew what it was. Um, but I was completely wrong. I had no idea. It was until I came and saw with my own eyes and heard with my own ears. Um, I, I just had no idea just what a monstrous abomination it really is, what a massive uh, injustice it really is. On this day of the week-long book launch, Shabin, Waldman, and a number of activists have gathered in the village of Susia, located in the West Bank. <laughs> It's at the heart of a land dispute that has been going on for decades. Israeli forces have repeatedly demolished the houses here. And they have been rebuilt by its residents time and again. Several of the essays in the book took place in Susia. The village of Susia for years now has been an internationalized story. Um, so who can make a difference? Everyone. Um, who has to hear about what, what's happening here? Everyone. And in that sense, our testimonies, but also this book, um, is, it, it's, it's trying to reach out to the widest public possible. Waldman and Shabin work together with Breaking the Silence, a controversial NGO in which former Israeli soldiers collect and provide testimonies about their military service in the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. Part of the profits from sales of the book will go towards the organization. The Israeli left works so hard. Um, the young people from Breaking the Silence, the organization of soldiers who testify to their own truth, what they did, what they saw when they were serving in the occupied territories, have been remarkable partners for us. In a show of solidarity with the village's residents, Shabin and Waldman plant trees. It's a symbolic gesture in a place where electricity and water are anything but a given. Nasser, a spokesman for the village, is also featured in the book. I want people to know what's happening in Susia, how people here are suffering under the occupation all their lives, how the village looks when night falls. Just across from our houses we can see the lights of the Jewish settlement, but in our village it's all dark. They will see where the injustice lies. Fans of the book say it is a meaningful look into the hardships of Palestinian life under Israeli military rule. But critics are calling it a poison pen, arguing it's a superficial survey lacking insight, which largely ignores the Israeli perspective of the conflict. As for Shabin, he believes that change will have to be forced on Israel by none other than the American people. When there is no more money, when, when, the, when the tap is cut off and the money is no longer flowing from America to Israel, the occupation will end. It will be too expensive to maintain. So is the pen mightier than the sword? Can storytelling change facts on the ground? Some disagree, but these writers say yes. Our culture correspondent Maya Magit now joins me in this studio. Maya, I've enjoyed some of Michael Chabin's other works. Mm -hmm. Reviews here, though, are mixed. Uh, the Washington Post compared it to Mark Twain's classic, I Innocence Abroad. That's right. It's a very divisive issue. It's very political. It's very hard-hitting. I have the book right here so you can take a look at it. Kingdoms of Olives and Ash, Writers Confront the Occupation. So some of the criti critiques have been blistering, as you mentioned, like the one in the Washington Post where they said that the writers appear lost, that they're, it's too superficial, that they avoid Palestinian extremists and they only show the Israeli extremists, mm -hmm. and they avoid average Israelis. So there are there is that side 
side, which I think has some merit, those criticisms. But I think the book also has merit, and we can't dismiss it entirely. Some of the essays are really poignant. There's some very interesting insights into parts of the West Bank that most people, especially Israelis, never get to see, never get to visit. So you do get to meet some very interesting characters. Of course, everything is colored by Breaking the Silence, which is the one that took everyone on these tours. The group that took, uh, and as, as you said, controversy collects testimony from That's uh, right. Israeli uh, former Israeli soldiers or who do service and there's been dispute about the accuracy of that. Uh, there has testimony. been and there's been a dispute about whether they are factual or not because they are anonymous but some of them have been checked some of them have been found to be factual so I, I think it's, it has some merits still. Okay you'll lend me the book Maya I'll decide sure. for myself. Maya Margie thanks for joining us.